This is a stretcher for stretching canvas and I've designed it so you can build it without the use of a table saw. You will need some tools though and I'll have a list of those tools in the description below. One of the things that I'm really excited to bring to my Maker's Mob is original artwork. If you've been following my show you know that I'm a professional artist and I'll have a slideshow of some of my paintings at the end of this video but I believe that original artwork has a huge effect in interior design. And I think that anybody can make original artwork. And most of the paintings that I make, I always refer to as building a painting because the, the paintings start down here in the wood shop and they're really based on construction and design and color. Not so much as painting and drawing, but really kind of building aspects. And something I really feel that I can teach you. And I also think that while you're learning how to make your own artwork for either your own home or for a client, you'll also end up learning a lot of really interesting stuff about art history. And you really are not even going to realize that you're learning that stuff, but all of a sudden you'll know it. So I hope that you'll check out my Maker's Mob by clicking the link in the description. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this stretcher. For this project, we're going to make a 34 by 40 inch stretcher to stretch a canvas. And I'll use material right off the rack from the home store so you won't need a table saw. The first two boards you'll need are described as one by threes, but they actually measure three quarters of an inch by two and a half inches. And when you're picking the material, take a minute, look down the material and try to buy the straightest boards that you can. The other material is molding. This is called doorstop molding. And they sold it at seven foot lengths at the home store that I go to. And that should be just enough for this project. This is what we'll be making. It's basically a frame with a center support and then we'll band the edge of the frame with this molding. To find the measurements of these five pieces, I like to take the material I'm using, double it up, and take a measurement, and then write it down. So this is 3 quarters of an inch. And now for these two long parts of the frame, I'll subtract 3 quarters of an inch, which will leave me with 39 and a quarter. And for my cut list, I'll write down 2 is the quantity, Two and a half inches is what the one by three measures by 39 and one fourth. To find the measurement of the shorter parts to the frame, we can measure the one by threes and we know they're two and a half inches, so that's five inches, plus the edge banding or the doorstop that we're using. And we'll double that up, that's five and three quarters. And 34 minus five and three quarters is 28 and one fourth. And so we now need three is the quantity, two and a half by 28 and one fourth. That's how I find my measurements for the cut list and now I can start cutting the parts to size. Now I'm going to cut the five parts a little heavy, which means just a little bit longer than what I need. So for the 39 and a quarter, I'll cut them at 40. Now I'll get the three 28 and a quarters from the next eight foot board and I'll cut these a little heavy too. Now I've set up a stop block and I'll cut the parts to length. I'll readjust the stop block for the shorter parts. Now that I have the five parts cut to size and you can see the frame, I'll take a quick measurement and I'm at 39 and a quarter by 33 and a quarter. And when I add the edge banding, I'll be at the finished size of 40 by 34. The next step is to use pocket hole screws and build the frame. When I drill the holes for the pocket hole screws, I'm only drilling holes in the ends of the three short pieces of the frame. This is an old pocket hole jig and this model is no longer available, 
but I'll put a link in the description to the model that's available now and it will do the same thing. Now I'll use a little wood glue on the joint, an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw, and I'm going to line up the parts so they're flush on the edge, then clamp them in place, making sure I'm still flush, and then use two pocket hole screws on each joint. Okay, so now that I've got the frame together, I can get to work on banding the edge. The molding will be attached like this. So the outside edge will be the highest part of the stretcher. Generally, I'll make this piece of molding on the table saw with either a 35 or maybe a 45 degree angle. But keeping in mind, some people may not have a table saw, using this stop molding is another alternative. I start by using the miter saw to make an inside miter cut. Then I'll hold the molding so the inside of the miter is flush with the edge of the frame and mark the other side for the next cut. I've kept the miter saw cutting in the same direction and simply flipped the molding upside down. I'm going to cut it a little heavy first and then trim it to size. To attach the molding, I'm using a bead of wood glue and inch and a quarter nails in the nail gun and I'll be sure to keep the bottom of the molding flush with the bottom of the frame. To mark for the last miter cut, I'll hold the long point of the miter at the back of the molding and I'll mark a line at the back of the molding on this side. I'll take this line and extend it to the back of the molding and this is the miter I'm going to cut. I'll cut it a little heavy and that way I'll have the opportunity to trim it if I need to. And it looks like I'll need to take just a little bit off.
So that's how to make a stretcher and I'll be posting a video sometime in the next few days on this channel on how to stretch a canvas and when I stretch the canvas I'll be stretching a canvas that's described as raw cotton duck and on my makers mob I'll explain why I'm using raw cotton duck and what its significance is in art history and how that will affect the painting and why a lot of color field painters used raw cotton duck. So there's going to be a lot of interesting things in my Maker's Mob that will help you to bring original artwork to your home or to your clients or whatever you want. I think it's just a it's another nice uh, creative thing to be able to do and knowing the art history uh, is a good thing to do. If you think about music, I mean imagine trying to be uh, a guitarist without knowing who Chuck Berry is or Jimmy Page. You always kind of need to know the people who came before you to help inspire you to make something maybe a little bit different. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, I responded to a video by Mateus Wandel uh, this week with another video on my Shop Talk channel. Mateus posted a video titled, Don't Be an Artist for a Living. So I kind of uh, took that on as like a little conversation and uh, responded on my channel. And I'll have a link to that video in the, in the description. It's just kind of a fun conversation, nothing, uh, I like Mateus, so it's kind of cool. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.